Welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you. And Reed is magnet. And I thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on our authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are. And thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful and you've worked so very hard. And we are blessed. We are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. Good afternoon. How's everybody today? My name is Daniel Harry. I am the author of The Jesus Ring, Shadows, and Ramblings of an Old Poot. I have two more coming out. One would be called Red Tide, but I may have changed that. You know how many red tides there are out there? And um, another book called Insignificant. They should come out about the uh, first part of 2022. Now, like I said, I'm the author of The Jesus Ring. Can you see it? Oops. There you go. Shadows. And ramblings of an old poot. My webpage is danscribbling.com. That's got two s's and two b's i made the assumption that everybody knew what scribbling and what uh uh how to spell scribbling but i was wrong the book basically we're going to be talking about today or we can talk about all three of them if you want to but the primary one was the jesus ring uh the jesus ring is basically a uh You'd call it a science fiction, fantasy, Christian-based. Uh, that's the genres there it's in. And probably good for everybody above 12 years old. Uh, it's, it, some people classify it as Christian fiction, and, and basically it is. It follows the, uh, the events leading up to Armageddon and the world uh, events today. So anything you want to chat about, you just type it in. I'm ready. One of the, one of the I just started writing a couple of years ago, uh, fiction. I've been writing the last 40 years uh, technical documents for the different companies I've owned. And uh, we basically tie in around what they call compliance inspection and, and industrial inspection at the plants, refineries, gas processing, uh, those kind of facilities, power generation, uh, compressors, you name it. And I uh, kind of semi-retired a couple of years ago and started writing, and I always wanted to write fiction. Just kind of didn't have the time. This is one of the reasons that uh, uh, I began writing. 
And Shadows was actually was my first. And kind of to, you know, get some practice in. The Jesus Ring, I was out fishing one day and, uh, you know, it was at, the, at dawn. And I was just, uh, I was amazed at how beautiful the morning was. I don't know if you can tell or not, but behind me is a beautiful Lavaca Bay in Port Lavaca, Texas. And that's where me and my wife live now. And uh, the dolphins were out this morning, about maybe 50 yards off the bulkhead. And it looks like it's cloudy, but there's not a cloud in the sky, and it's very bright. And I've got my sunscreen on. I've got my sunglasses on. i got my hat on to cover up my bald spot so it doesn't get cooked. So some people ask, uh, you know, why did you... Uh, you know, how did you start? How, how did you come up with the Jesus ring? And once again, I was, I was fishing early one morning in Galveston Bay in late summer of 2019. It was enough. Uh, it was early enough to watch the dawn turn from gray to full sunrise, and it was beautiful. The fish were feeding, the bait jumping as the saltwater predators fed. Uh, maybe it wasn't such a great morning for them, but it, I liked it. The egrets, pelicans. Uh, seagulls, they were all getting their breakfast, and the water was calm and as clear as Galveston Bay can get. And there were several dolphins surfing in the channel close to uh, where the boat was anchored. And while I enjoyed the beauty of the sunrise and nature at work, I thought about the miracles we see every day, but don't really recognize as God's work when we're enjoying them. Some foolish thoughts come to my head, some not so foolish. You know, you often wonder if the animals can can, can enjoy uh, the beauty that, that we see, that God God gave us. The uh, anyway, the the thought come to me, occurred to me that this won't last. The end times have been foretold in the Bible in the Book of Revelation, and it's been foretold by Matthew, Mark, Timothy, Luke, John, and Daniel. Matthew warned us to watch and be ready. The apocalypse is inevitable. And once started, my days of peacefully enjoying a sunrise may be over. That's what prompted the, uh, the, the beginning of the book. Now, I'm not a fatalist, but I am a firm believer in the Bible, including 2 Peter 3.14-3.16 through 3, 16, that states, All his messages speaking in them of these things in which are some things are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. That that meant to me that, uh, you know, while God said don't change the Bible, I, I'm believing in the end times that the scriptures will be, will be changed and uh because there's unscrupulous people, and we all know who, the, who, their, who their masters are. We're starting to see the events that were forecast that will eventually lead to Armageddon. The wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in places that never quaked before, and they're far from any tectonic plates. Volcanoes that have been uh, active, uh, inactive for thousands of years, sometimes hundreds of thousands of years. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're becoming active. The unrest, the famine, and diseases that there was never seen before, such as COVID. These, among others, were all predicted. Hence, the apocalypse is coming. It's here. The uh, James Gregg, yes, I am here. Can you? Are you there? Anyway, I've got uh, the Jesus ring is a, to, to me is a kind of exciting ring, and it should be the way that you hope the Armageddon turns out. Uh, basically, it you know if God turns us, if there's not enough faithful, then God will wash His hands of us and turn our planet over to Satan and His harvesters. Uh, this was a I don't know if you can see the picture well or not. This is the first 
cover that I designed for the book. And uh, it was voted down. It's basically showing Peter and Satan facing off at each other and the storms around them. So there is a storm coming. Let's go to the next picture and see what we have there. It's going to be a surprise for me. Hello, Clive. Okay, Clive's not talking to me. Anyway, uh, next picture, please, Clive. So if anybody has read the Jesus ring out there and you got questions, uh, fly right in there and ask them. This, this picture here was an artist rendition of the harvesters. And this is a picture of Red Tide. Let's go back to the harvesters. Clive, you're killing me. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the harvesters, Clive. This was this is the end result of the of the cover. So basically two storms of God's uh, power separating. And we hope it all turns to the white. Again, this, okay, this is the harvester, and this is an artist rendition, but what I wanted to do, I, I got a thing about people that don't pull their pants all the way up, so I just had the harvester eat the people with their pants halfway up. I don't know if you can see that in the picture or not. Maybe cruel, but, you know, everybody has their little pet peeves. But these critters, they actually can gobble people up to take them back to Tartarus for uh which is Satan's uh, home ground. Tartarus is basically what hell was called in the olden time. James Gregg uh, says, are you there? Yes, I am, James. The uh, Let's go to the next picture, Clive. Hey, Clive, let's go to the next picture, please. Anyway, I've got a new book going to be coming out uh, probably the last first year. It's called Red Tide. Again, I'll probably end up having to change the title because there's about 8 billion red tides out there. Uh, this is an interesting book. It's, uh, Clive, you're killing me. Stay with, uh, go back to Red Tide, please. And uh, anyway, it's, I started writing it before re uh, COVID. And it's about a bacteria that comes in on a meteorite. And what it affects is male mammals. So the women basically have to take over the world. And it gives the true meaning to the, trying to save mankind. It's going to be a good book. It's an exciting book. Uh, it's kind of apocalyptic, but, you know, I kind of morbid sometimes. The, uh, I don't want to give away too much on it, but it begins down here in Port Lavaca in, uh, Powderhorn Lake. And like I said, I think it's y'all, y'all will, uh, enjoy that, that book also. It's, it's, it's not religious based. It's not Christian based. But, you know, I don't use uh, foul language in any of my books. I'm kind of like the the guy that said, you know, comedians have to be filthy. They're not funny. They're just filthy. Well, that's the same way I feel about writing. I'm trying to prompt Clive into... Uh, Changing the picture. Y'all bear with me just a second. Anybody got, is anybody out there but me?
anyway, they're uh, if all of my books and stuff I can keep on or for sale at Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and uh, they're available in hardback, paperback, and uh, ebooks. Now, I haven't got uh, a uh, audio book done yet because uh, I'm sure not going to do it. With, not with my West Texas accent. Hi, Crystal. Hi. He says, I like the cover of Red Tide. And again, uh, all of the covers, basically I've designed and and or had a uh, somebody help me put them together. They're all my ideas, but the uh, doing the the artwork is sometimes a pretty good challenge for me. So if you have uh, if you have any questions or anything on the uh, uh, shadows. Shadows is, like I said, it was my first book, and I, it was published actually after uh, the Jesus Ring. Now the, uh, and it's about a legendary mythical creature of the Southeast American Indian tribes that passed through uh, East Texas. And around uh, Livingston area, and you've never ever in your life heard of a critter like this. And better hope that you don't too. Anyway, so uh, I don't stay in one genre. I I like to move around. I, I the uh, shadows is a a horror. Uh, the Jesus ring is basically a Christian fiction. Ramblings of an Old Poot is a collection of short stories that are humorous to me. And they're two stories about, uh, you know, how you get uh, life's lessons taught to you unwillingly. Uh, give you an instance uh, I got broke of rodeo and I used to ride barebacks and bulls. Uh, shortly after I got out of the service, I am a veteran, but uh, I used to rodeo and ride uh, barebacks and, and ride bulls, and I'd chew tobacco and dip snuff at the same time. And I got broke of that all the same night because I swallowed my dip and my jaw, got hung up on a big old uh, white charlet, and he run me into a gate, broke six ribs, and I swallowed both the jaw and the dip. So... Once again, I was taught a very valuable lesson at that time, like I said, all at one time. And that's basically kind of the type of stories that uh, uh, are in the ramblings of an old poop. I've got probably a, enough for three more uh, short stories, enough for three more books like that. You know, uh, take a silly topic and expand on it. Stuff we've all been exposed to. So the uh, one one of my favorite stories in 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 uh, Ramings and Old Poot is uh, the critter in the hen house, and this is a true story about me and my grandfather. The uh, there's another one uh, that I really like. I finished it just before he published it. Uh, was called the biannual exam, and the uh, older you get, you'll start discovering, you know, the the examinations that the doctors have require from you, either annually or biannually, uh, that are not enjoyable, and basically kind of our attitude about going to the office, uh, going to the doctor's offices. But like I said, there's a dozen of them in there, and they're short. They're short stories, and uh, it's, it's good to kind of have a copy of it to read a short story before you go to bed at night. But again, they, they're humorous to me. They may not be humorous to you. Now, I guess we can go back to the uh, 
the Jesus ring, like I said, because we're supposed to be doing that today. The, uh, the Jesus ring is not a peaceful and loving novel. The tribulation period is foretold will be, will be horrible, terrifying, and deadly. And the good Lord sent a, a pacifist to try to change the world to follow his father's will and to attempt to release the domination Satan holds over the unfaithful. But in the Jesus ring, this time God sent a, a, a warrior. And we're going to need one. The What differentiates the Jesus ring from other books of Christian fiction is that no other book allows God to take an active role in the fight against Satan. And you bet he's, he, he's probably going to be taking a very, very large part in it. No other book mentions God's true powers and, and bestowing the knowledge of the universe to humankind. There's a lot of, there's some science in the Jesus ring that have to do with, uh, like I said, uh, magnetic flying cars that, that basically work on the uh, magnetic field around the earth or around every uh, celestial body. The, uh, if they could, find a way to tune into each band. I mean, you take a look at a magnet and you sprinkle, say, some iron dust around it, and you can actually see the bands. Well, in those bands, there's smaller bands, and each of them have their own different frequency because they, uh, uh, they, they, they're static. They stay there all the time. The, in, in, in the Jesus ring, God gives us, or gives Peter, uh, Peter Christian is the main character, uh, gives him the ability to uh, design and build some fantastic weapons and uh, life-saving devices that basically we're going to need uh, in the end time simply because they're going to be, there won't be any food, there won't, your, your money will be worthless, uh, and the only way you're going to be able to eat or get medical care uh, or do anything is by having the mark, and we don't want that, but the uh, guys giving us, uh, allows them to build fantastic machines and weapons to use in their fight against evil and help the faithful. Uh, the science fiction machinery and weapons mentioned throughout the book are all mathematically conceivable and become and can become a reality once science catches up with the ideas. Uh, there's already manipulation of molecules. Uh, you know, the IBM did it back years and years ago where they actually... Uh, moved a, 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 a minuscule IBM or, or made a minuscule IBM uh, through microscope. Uh, some people ask if my book advocates for a specific cause or agenda. And the, the Jesus ring basically identifies the way I would foresee the final war of the end times to be waged. Satan to me is, is actually is not a uh, well, he's corporeal. He's he, he, he cannot he can no longer. He was cast out of heaven. He can no longer change from energy uh, to matter. And so, him and his minions live on a planet called Tartarus, and they know the secrets of the universe. They like the. Uh, Warping space and uh, time. Uh, it's, it's mathematically proven it can be done. Probably God and Satan both know how to do it. And basically, the uh, he uses it, and the unfaithful are his feedstock for him and his uh, harvesters and his minions. So basically, if they, when his harvesters get gobbles you up and uh, takes you back to Tartarus, then you know you're just food and fodder for 
Satan in his menus. And I've got a seagull behind me that's helping out as much as he can. The uh, one of the other things that, that uh, my book advocates for a specific cause or agenda is, you know, God issued ten laws for humankind to obey. That's the Ten Commandments. They weren't suggestions. They weren't uh, Fair Goer seven forty eight says, "Where are you now?" Well, I am in. Uh, I'm on Lavaca Bay in Port Lavaca, Texas, and this is this is my view every morning, or all every day. Uh, we really love our home here, and for an old boy that's born and raised in West Texas, out in the sand, <laughs> out in the sand dunes uh, around West Texas. I always say that uh, Odessa was a, uh, we, we got the best beach in the world. We don't have any water, but we got one heck of a beach. Anyway, we got, uh, we moved down here about a year and a half ago. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful view behind me. And, and my wife actually told me, uh, you know, you might want to think about putting that, uh, do, doing your podcast down here by the bay because it is a beautiful view. And she said, you want people paying attention to you and not the bay. Well, you know, everybody needs a good view. And what I'm looking for now is... Fairgore 748... You got a nice view. Yes, I do. And Fairgore 748 says, Wow, wish I can go there. Well, Port uh, Lavaca Bay is a is a big bay. Uh, it feeds from uh, it feeds out of the Lavaca River and several creeks and, and it flows down into Matagorda, which then Matagorda goes out into the Gulf. Uh, down around Port O'Connor. I'm trying to remember the three rules about talking in public is uh, one is don't scratch, uh, one is don't cuss, and uh, one is don't pick your nose. So there you got the three rules. <laughs> the three rules of speaking in public. And uh, I'm really running out of stuff to talk about here. So y'all going to have to help me out. But Take a look at my books. I'm not a, an impressive talker sometimes because I didn't really have my agenda put filled out for today. And I pretty much uh, don't want to give any uh, any what do you call it? Spoilers away on my books because I've got a tendency to talk too much. Okay, Fairgoer12481 said, what is your story all about? Well, which one? I'm assuming we're talking about the Jesus ring. And basically it's about a ring that was once worn by Jesus. And the, the ring was actually built by God and delivered to earth and Mary, Jesus' mother, found the ring and put it on. And it gave her, uh, basically the ring it gives you a, 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 a one-way telephone to God. And you can, uh, basically Peter can just talk directly to God. And... This is how he gets all of the information to build the fantastic machines and, and uh, actually kind of gets ideas of what Satan is going to do next. You know, there's uh, in Revelation, the seals that mentions, I don't think we'll ever see them. We won't know that they've been broken. So be on the lookout. That's. Anyway, I think you'll like the way it ends. 
because uh, if you don't, then we're in trouble. <laughs> the, uh, I, I, you, like I said, you better hope it ends the way uh, that the book says it does, because uh, Revelation, uh, you know, the tribulations, they're, they're going to be tough. They're going to be miserable. And I've had really good reviews on the book, on the Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, Goodreads, uh, all authors. And the, you know, I've actually only had, I think, one. Uh, bad review, and and this lady was upset because I said that the uh, the rapture wasn't going to be coming, and you can't please everyone. So uh, I I actually believe that that most of us are going to have to live through the tribulation anyway. Uh, Fairgore. 12481, where to get your book. Uh, you can go to Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, about any place. Uh, you know, Google it. Uh, like I said, but you can get them uh, at Amazon, Barnes & Nobles. Uh, I've gotten some from Walmart, from uh, Target. Uh, basically, any place that sells uh, books. And like I said, they're, they're both in hardback, uh, paperback, and ebook. Uh, well, we've got an error message on there. I don't know if I'm getting kicked off here or not. So, uh, Clive, you're going to have to tell me when my time is up. Bear with me. Like I said, I, I, I'm a hat type of guy, so just in case I don't see anybody for, I want to wish you all thanks, happy Thanksgiving, and A Merry Christmas. So the Jesus ring would be a great Christmas present. And I hope you like my Santa Claus hat. That's what I grew the beard for this year was uh, I do play Santa Claus occasionally uh, years and years. So this is not my homeless look. It's uh, basically working on my Santa Claus look. So with that, I'm going to have to wrap it up. So I want y'all to have a wonderful weekend, rest your weekend, be safe all next week, and God bless all of you. So y'all take care. I don't think he's going to let me go.